today I'm going to be doing another library haul. Library haul. And I'm going to start with the book I actually already finished, which is The Quiet Zone. And this is a nonfiction book. a town in West Virginia, or an area in West Virginia, where they don't have Wi-Fi and cell phone service. So let's move on because I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. This is by John Steinbeck, <clears throat> a Russian journal. This was written in 1948 and it It's a nonfiction book about Russia, basically right after uh, World War II. It's kind of like a travelogue, but a little bit different. But it's more focusing on the lifestyles of people who live there instead of politics. So I thought that would be an interesting read. And then I have Carnality. This is a book translated. Um, it's one of the books I'm reading for my own personal reading women around the world challenge, and I believe this is Sweden, 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 Sweden. But this is a fiction book. Blowing my hair in my face. Lena, Lena, Wolf, and then I have. We need to talk about Kevin. And this book has been on my TBR for a super long time, and it's a movie as well, but I've never seen the movie. I have no idea what this book is about. I just know it's about, um, like a troubled young man, presumably named Kevin. But this gets recommended a lot in pretty much every book thread I've ever read. So, I thought it would be time to read it. I have a lot of I have a lot of classics. And I hope that this there's a sheep right here. I hope it's not making the sound dampen. Um but I have a lot of classics and books that have been on my TBR for a super long time. Like over three to four years. Which is a long time for me. I know it's maybe not for a lot of people. You'll see that in a second. So then I have A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. A Tree Grows 
in Brooklyn. And I know that this is kind of considered a young book. At least that's how <clears throat> some of the libraries in the system classify it as like a children's book. But I didn't think it was a children's book. I thought the subject matter was kind of heavy for kids. But I've only seen the movie. Like the 1940s version, I think. But I remember really liking the movie. And this book has been on my TBR for a long time. It's also been checked out from my local library for a while, for some reason. I don't know if it was the same person or multiple people that really wanted to read them. Okay, next is big and huge, and probably going to take me longer to read than the rest of these, but it is Anna Karenina. Anna Ka oh, I'm real off. By Leo Tolstoy. And this is the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. This is the version that my library had. So this is the version I will be reading. I'm going to read this soon. This has been on my TBR for a super long time. And like I said, I wanted to read more classics. And how much more classic can I get? Tolstoy. I've never read anything by Tolstoy. <clears throat> I have read um, <clears throat> a few things by Dostoevsky, so I'm not super intimidated by like Russian classic writers. I know that they have a lot of their own quirks and differences from like English writers. American writers. Specifically the naming system. But I would say that <clears throat> Crime and Punishment has prepared me well. So I'm really excited to read that. To read that. To read that. Next we have uh, Bastard Out of Carolina by Dorothy Allison. is another um, older book. I think that this is... I don't know what year this was written. I will tell you. If my fingers will work. It says, it says, it says, it's... Am I crazy? I thought this was published a while ago. 1992. Is that I assume it's correct if it's written there. I thought this book came out a lot earlier. So maybe this is a classic, maybe it isn't, depending on what you consider classics. If you consider it by time frame or by notoriety. But this is like a coming of age story. So I don't have any nails. I don't have any nails. Because I was cleaning the other day. And I was moving furniture to clean and vacuum. And my last remaining long nail snapped in half and it hurt so bad. It got caught in something and it just really hurt. But then all my other nails have been breaking too, like just when I'm cooking or when I'm doing dishes, um, just literally like everyday things, my nails are not strong because of the cold, because it's been super, super cold, and they've been super, super brittle. Next 
the next, the next, the next, the next. We have Sickened, Sickened, Sickened by Julie Gregory. I'm not super consistent with who, which authors I say and which I don't. I'm sorry. I wanted to do this more fast paced than usual. My last video was very like rambly, talky, slow. But this is a memoir. A memoir. Memoirs are my favorite genre. I love memoirs, especially a good one. But this is about a girl who writing this is older, so she's a woman. Um who went through growing up with a woman who had a bunch of thousands by proxy. I think you would describe the person, I think you would describe the mother as having it and not the child. But basically where, um, like if you're familiar with the story of Gypsy Rose and how her mom made it seem like she was super sick when she wasn't, just to get sympathy or like attention and a variety of other things that go along with it. But I assume that this is going to be similar. <laughs> Move on to this book, Nine Continents, a memoir in and out of China, another memoir. The only thing is, is this book goes by another name, and I had a really hard time tracking it down in the library system, because I knew it as Once Upon a Time in the East. I think that might be the UK title, or literally just the rest of the world, but in the US it goes by Nine Continents. Right? Nine Continents, yeah. another memoir. This book I just saw at the library in the new nonfiction, and I thought it looked interesting. But then I looked it up online, and it has not very good reviews, so I'm still holding out hope. But the hope is dwindling, is the point I'm trying to make. But I don't know, a lot of books get super mixed reviews, like The Quiet Zone has mixed reviews, and I really like that. But one of the biggest complaints is that this is under-researched, which in a nonfiction book is not great. Let me tell you what the title is. This is Digital Madness, How Social Media is Driving Our Mental Health Crisis and How to Restore Our Sanity. And I find books with topics like this or similar topics to be super interesting. Like books about uh, the impact of social media, how social media works, like the inner workings of it all. Um, I, I don't know, I like exploration of technology in a non-fiction context. I'm not a big fan of sci-fi, so, I mean, there's much more in the world that is scarier than an actual sci-fi novel. So, I thought this would be interesting because it kind of explores newer stuff like TikTok. I do not have TikTok, and I'm not saying that from like a point of prestige or anything find the platform super annoying. Like, people send me TikToks all the time and it drives me crazy. Like, stop sending me TikToks. And just like in the middle of a conversation, I just think it's so rude. But I'm not super big on short form content. Like, here and there maybe, but not all the time since it's not very short anymore people send me tiktoks that are like three minutes long why are you why are you doing that to me <laughs> i don't care enough i'm in the middle of eating dinner but 
a lot of books like this don't really talk about TikTok because it's so new. So I thought it would be interesting. It's unfortunate that this book is not highly reviewed or even well reviewed. I'm old, but not that old. This is another memoir. This is about, this is about, this is about, this is about growing up in Ireland in, I think, the 19, yeah, the 1990s when the troubles were going on. Um, but this is, did you hear Mammy died? Which I'm sure sounds better with an Irish accent, but I'm not Irish. Um, by Seamus O'Reilly. I like this font. I like this cover. I think it's very simple, but very, um, like, eye-catching. I like the curvy words. Good insight for me. But this book has been on my TBR since it came out, and they always had a copy at my library, but someone always kept checking it out, and I was like, give that to me. Because I love no more. move on. I don't want to make this video seven hours long. So then we have a heavy, 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 hefty book. And this is, this has like a weird smell. It honestly smells like new tires. So it must be like brand new or something. It's not that new book smell, it's that new tire smell. But this is Cinema Speculation by And I thought that this would be interesting, because it's non-fiction, exploring cinema history. I love film, film history. And I figured that Tarantino would have some good insight, you know, considering he's a very highly acclaimed director. But I'm hoping that this book is good and that I learn a lot and that it's not just the same stuff that's in every other film related history book. Let's move on. I'm stacking those very precariously on the bed. The next book is The Book of Goose. Goose, 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 goose. I love this cover. I think that's cute or cool. I don't know. I think these are cute, but I know that a lot of people are afraid of them. I think it's because I don't have, like, a story like everyone else does where they got attacked by a goose growing up. I've never been attacked by a goose. I've had them, um, hiss at me, but that's it. I think that they're cute, but I understand it distance. I just really like birds. There's a park nearby where they have a ton of geese and ducks and swans. Well, not a ton of swans. There's like one or two. But it's just cool to see them. See them waddling about. This is a fiction book. This is, I believe, like a coming of age story. Some of these books, I put them on a hold and I don't get them until they're released or even past that and then I forget what they're about. But at one time, I was really interested in the premise, so, and the title and the cover. Is that it? No, that's not. Oh my god, we have so many books. So this is a new, like a brand, brand new book. This is Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. This is a, like a horror book. I've been seeing super mixed reviews about this, but I hope that it's good. It sounds really, really good. It sounds like a book I'd really like, so. 
I'm looking forward to this. I haven't been reading a ton of horror lately. I read a lot of horror in October and then the months after when the books finally come in from the library. And then I get super sick of horror books. But I'm excited to read this. Okay, next I have Ice by Anna Cavan, or Anna Cavan, I'm not sure how you would pronounce that. I'm not really completely sure what this book is about, I just saw really good reviews for it, so. Um, it's a book that, or like a genre that I don't really read, which is kind of sci-fi fantasy-ish. But I believe this is considered a classic, because this is the 50th anniversary was originally published in 1967. But I'm looking forward to reading this because I saw a lot of people saying this is like the best book they've read in a long time. Um, I feel like there's kind of a resurgence for lesser known female authors of yesteryear and they're being republished. Um, at least that's what I've been seeing in like the people that I follow. But they mostly read uh, woman authors anyway, so. And then last but not least, we have The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. And this will make for the, why did I phrase it like that? That doesn't make any sense execution is horrible. This will be the... I don't know how to phrase this. I'll finally be reading something by Anne Bronte, which is the last Bronte sister that I haven't read anything by. That was so complicated to say. I know I just sound very stupid. But, um, yeah, I've read a few books by Charlotte Bronte, I read Jane Eyre and Villette, and then I read Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, but I never read anything by Anne, so this is my, this is my Anne book that I'm starting with. I'd like to read everything by all of them. I think that Emily Bronte only wrote Wuthering Heights, or only wrote and finished Wuthering Heights. I think there are other works by her that are not. either not done, or I don't really know what I'm saying. I think that her one completed novel is Wuthering Heights. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like I forgot how to speak all of a sudden. This makes good sticky sounds. Paperback. I listen back and either I just don't hear it or it's not showing up on video or audio, whatever. I don't know, that sort of thing in other people's videos does not bother me, so I apologize if it bothers you. I just don't really care. Probably because I'm super used to it because I live on a main road, so... I don't know. This is my last book that I have. We're all done, actually. Um, but I just want to say that I am moving soon. Like, I'm looking at a place this weekend. Um, so I don't know when I'm going to get time to film. But the good thing is, is that I'm probably going to have more time to film once I move. Because it'll most likely be quieter and I'll have more time that is quiet and then I can kind of do whatever I want not have to worry about people making a ton of noise or me um like I don't know getting in the way of other people with filming which has never really happened but you know we're looking at a place 
and I guess we'll see how that pans out. But I've been kind of busy lately, and I've had not a lot of time to film, um, just because it's been really busy here. But I'm hoping that that'll shape up. But as for right now, this is the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you are still awake or still watching, let me know if you are reading any books that are good, or if you're about to read a book that you're excited for. I am always looking for a book recommendation. Clearly, I read a lot. <laughs> so, let me know. Let me know if you've read any of these books, and if you like them, if you hate them, if you think I have horrible taste in books. <laughs> Maybe not that harsh. Maybe be nice about it. I don't want my feelings to get hurt. Because I read too much memoir <laughs> content. Um, but anyway, have a good day.